This video is about the Real Housewives of Orange County shocking gossip to do with the ex-housewives. I do have a few I want to talk about. They've had so much crazy stuff happen, I had to. And some are faves of the fans and some aren't, but it was worth telling you this gossip or I wouldn't bother making a video over it. So please like, subscribe, and hit that notification button and enjoy this journey into some of the juicier stuff that's happened with some of the cast. And it will give you some insight into season 17 in the process. So by the end of the video, you'll see that there's a lot that still applies to the upcoming season that's coming out in March. Usually it comes out in March, 2023. So get ready, like, subscribe, and hit the notification button. You never know what you're gonna get on my channel. Let's get started. By the way, you guys, I'm going to put in the description the time codes for this YouTube video if you wanna jump around because I'm talking about a few different women. It's no secret that the last few seasons of Real Housewives of Orange County have not been popular with the fans. And so Andy's been scrambling to try to fix the problem. They really brought out the big guns. Uh, we've got Taylor Armstrong doing a crossover from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. We have Vicki Gumbelson making appearances. We have Tamra Judge back. I mean, we probably have some new people. We have people who've been staples that allegedly have been downgraded. So it's, you know, a, a real shakeup to get people to watch the show because they had like two or three kind of bad seasons. Um, people weren't that into it. They were losing interest. And this was the anchor franchise for Andy Cohen. It's what, you know, started it all. The first person I want to do a, a tea touch base on is Bronwyn Wyndham Burke because Bronwyn uh, was in Miami Beach at the same time I lived there. We lived in the same building. Some of her kids went to the same elementary school as my son and she served on the PTA for a, a short period of time at the same time as me. Anyway, what I want to say is the Bronwyn Wyndham Burke that I saw on TV and that has followed is like a different person to the person that was in Miami Beach. I'm so confused. Now, they were, I heard, a bit of a wild child. There were rumors that they swung a little and so on, but I, not, like, what happened is shocking. That's all I have to say. But, I mean, you know, so is life in general. So, anyway, I wanted to talk about Bronwyn because if you watch her Instagram feed, you know, she's very serious with, she has a new girlfriend. She's decided that she's fully gay. She divorced her husband after 23 years. She's a proud LGBTQ community member at this point. Um, and, but if you look at her feed, it's so confusing because she seems to be having this great life, although she struggles from time to time with stress and she admits it on her feed. She seems to be traveling. She seems to be in like the Carolinas, you know, right now. And she's, you know, she doesn't look like she's struggling financially in any way. Well, I was surprised because it turns out that she had filed in mid-December a request to the court for child support of 10000 a month from Sean for her children because she wasn't getting any support from him allegedly and she had like $2,000 in her bank. So uh, everybody in Miami Beach believed that Sean Burke was really rich. Uh, when I did a dive about him for the Patreon, his work is very strange. Um, I'll share a little of that here in a minute. But I, it's really difficult to determine their financial situation. I guess that's what I want to say. Now, this is what was written in The Sun. I tried to download the court documents directly, but for some reason the court is restricting their download maybe at the request of Sean, I don't know. But it says, Bronwyn, who was a cast member on season 14 and 15 of Real Housewives of Orange County, wrote in court documents, I'm unemployed except for two years during our nearly 23 year marriage. I've stayed home to care for our seven children. I've relied on the respondent for all financial security since I was 20 years old. I've relied on respondent to make all financial decisions for 23 years. And I've effectively been kept in the dark regarding the true extent of our business interests and assets. Ah, very interesting. 
Recently, respondents stopped providing any support to me and I'm unable to provide for my own support or the support of our children. I have had to rely on a family member to assist in meeting my basic living expenses and even expenses for our children. In a filed income and expense declaration, the Real Housewives notably admits to having just 2,900 in cash and a checkings and savings account. She said her average monthly expense costs are 25,750 to 10,000, of which is for rent in Newport Beach, California. The mom of seven who's very involved in the LGBTQ community and is a big advocate of sobriety compared her income to her former spouses. In the court documents, Bronwyn says she believes Sean, 49, earns more than 65000 per month gross income working as president and COO for one company. She also says he receives income of 10000 per month from another company. See what I mean? This is Sean's current LinkedIn. Okay, business strategy and leadership expert in economic transformation technology, ED tech, MED tech, lot AI and SaaS. And then he says he's position CEO, chief sales officer, business owner, head, vice president, president, business development. It says subject matter expert, information tech, SaaS, blockchain, cryptocurrency tokens, marketplace, financial operations, and cybersecurity. And then he does healthcare, finance, et cetera. But what is his job? Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, huh? What's your job? How are you making 65000 a month plus another ten grand? That's what I, I want to know. I mean, to me, it looks like he's a consultant and he is an expert at, you know, crypto-related items, blockchain, et cetera, and NFTs. SaaS, all that means is... You're an expert at setting up cloud solutions for licensing. So people, you know, uh, Microsoft functions like that with Word. So that's SaaS. But I'm like, hmm. By the way, guys, I used to do tech. That's in this uh, these two episodes of Dishing, Drama, Dana Wilkie, if you're curious about my life. <laughs> I also ran an ad agency, did movies and product placement, and did events for big parties like the Oscars and... Sundance and ooh, so many things. It's very sus, very sus. Now, recently she's been posting all these wonderful uh, visuals of her and her husband together in January. So they must have come to some sort of custody and support agreement. I wish I could download the damn thing. I can't yet. I'm, I'm hoping it'll uh, come available. I'll check tomorrow. So that weird video was Bronwyn showing that her husband and her girlfriend are going to meditation together. And this was posted right after the court filing, like I'm talking maybe two to three weeks later. Very strange, right guys? I guess they must have come to some sort of agreement, I so guess. So this brings us to Megan King, another housewife having issues with her ex-husband, Jim Edmonds. Loads of drama uh, surrounding them at the moment which is could be its own reality show. So the reason this brawl went down with Jim Edmonds and Megan King is that Jim Edmonds said that everything Megan King has ever said about him has been a lie and that he didn't cheat with the nanny. And his current wife, by the way, supposedly is Megan King's best friend or one of her good friends. And they had a threesome, and I guess Jim preferred her over Megan. I don't know. Megan just got some plastic surgery. She was married for like 30 days to a Biden. I mean, it's just crazy. Megan is, you know, a hot mess. I, so is Jim Edmonds. They really should have ended up together, but um, just two messes together. But here's, uh, I'm going to play for you what each person said about the other, the good parts. Oh my gosh, it's on Hollywood Raw, Dax and Adam's podcast. I love them. Okay, here we go. This is what Jim Edmonds said. Courtney Edmonds says, I never had a threesome with Megan, nor was I her friend. Let me play you what she says. I want to know, sorry, Adam, if you've got me. Adam, go with no, your question. I, was... then I'm gonna, I want to take them back to like when they met. So go with your question. Yeah. So, uh, no, Jim and, so Jim and Courtney, how did you guys meet? And Courtney, were you friends with Megan by any chance? 
No, I was actually friends with him first, and we met through mutual friends from Orange County, because that's where I'm from, that's where he's from, and so mutual friends of us introduced us at Stagecoach, and we were all there together, and as a big group, I didn't even know her, and I only met her, like, a couple of times, and then, you know, she says that we were best friends or something, and I, like, stole her husband, and it's, like, so far from the truth, because I never even really knew her, she's from Missouri, so I met her once, twice, maybe three times, and then they you know, got married and moved on with their lives. And that was Now that. listen, Jim says, this is just Megan. She's kind of crazy, I guess. Let me let you listen. And like, this is her well, reality seen, show. And well, she wanted like what, a, you, someone stole my husband. You see what gone. she's done, right? She's <laughs> blasted the last husband. She's blasted the last boyfriend or two. I mean, that's just her, she, it's just Anyone attention. That, like, I don't even understand why. Her, she humiliates online and it's, yeah. it's sad to use that tool for that reason. You know, she, any, all the guys I feel bad for, I mean, look at, they date her and then she blows them out the next day and with just made up stuff. And who knows if that stuff's true or not, but at least from my perspective, I never was able to defend myself or say, Hey, that's not true because I don't have that platform. But I just, like, stayed silent. I'm like, one day it'll come out, hopefully. It's really funny because Kenny, her last boyfriend, Kenny. Kenny? Um, <laughs> I've known him for, like, 12 years, and we play golf all the time. And um, <laughs> I didn't even know they were dating. And she's now blasting him in the media for cheating on her and whatever, all this stuff. And it, it's just, it's the same story all over again. So, it, you know, my poor kids, I, like... Every time another guy leaves the house, they're like, oh, he was mean. Like, I mean, they're going to grow up thinking every guy's mean. And that's one of the issues that we have with it is, you know, our kids or my kids and her stepkids are now thinking that every guy that leaves mommy's house is, is mean. And that's just an or, or deserts them. And, yeah. and abandonment, like, it's just the tabloids bad. reported this guy as a mystery boyfriend. Now we know who it is. And indeed, uh, Jim's not wrong. She did blast him in the media saying he cheated on her. Hmm. Gee, I wonder. Megan King says her son has cerebral palsy and Jim Edmonds is not wanting to acknowledge it. And she's like, you've never even spoken to doctors or gone to any of the doctor appointments to find out what our son Hart has. So that was kind of her follow-up to Jim Edmonds, uh, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, a tea dump, drag session, whatever. Um. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but, uh, you know, and I only know this, you know, just from reading the news stories. It's my first time talking to you guys. Um, it's the first time we all spoke together. But from what I saw in the media that one of your children, uh, unfortunately, has cerebral palsy. That And uh, I saw her post about that. So, that I mean, that's a serious thing. How is it for you guys raising a child? Because I feel like you have to communicate more dealing with a child with that. How is it for you kind of dealing with that? Well, first of all, he doesn't have cerebral palsy. He has, it's called um, PBL. And, and, and it's kind of like, um, it's its own little thing. It's it's kind of the very beginning stages. So it's not technically cerebral palsy because that wouldn't be, clearly they have little, um, you know, different versions of everything, of every disease, right? Because that wouldn't be fair to someone that has real cerebral palsy and we all see these kids that struggle so much. They can't even walk. Yeah, you know, and it's... there's just so many different versions. But he's got PBL, so, you know, unfortunately, um, she tried to. we tried to have the kids naturally, even uh, without the doctor's approval, and he got stuck uh, up inside, it, and he was the second twin out. And he got lack of oxygen to the brain, apparently, is what they said. And so I couldn't find any uh, PBL in the stages of cerebral palsy, only project based learning for students. And he got stuck uh, up inside it, and he was the second twin out. And he got lack of oxygen to the brain, apparently, is what they said. And so he has issues. He's got some white matter in the brain. It's like softening of the white matter in the brain. And so his learning is um, a little bit, it's a little bit slowed. It was weird because when he was a baby, you could tell he, he was fine. He was quirky, but he would catch up a little bit late, right? Like, so he was like, say in early stages, he was like two or three months behind Hayes. And then he was four months behind and then he was six months behind, but it was catching up. The only thing that I really see is just he's really temperamental. Um, he has behavioral issues and stuff, and he's slower, but he's catching up. And, and if, well, you, if you interacted with him for a couple hours, you wouldn't you'd even be know. Like, I can't really tell. But why would you tell your son or label your son as I can't? He can't walk when he can yeah, walk. You like, wouldn't, you wouldn't why, even know. why put that stamp on him and look like? 
And Jim goes on to say that, you know, he was upset that Megan spoke about his issue to the media and, you know, he has never received a diagnostic from a doctor to say that his son has cerebral palsy, only this other issue. Uh, certainly, when you get into the granularity of what Jim said versus what the tabloids spoke about, it's much more deeper than they made it sound. He is aware of an issue with his son, for sure. He can describe it in great detail, as he does on the podcast, but he's not calling it cerebral palsy. And so I just wanted to clarify that because I thought that was a little unfair. I, I don't particularly like Jim Edmonds ever since he posted that video where he called his you know, Megan and his kids tenants. And he did like a thing that he thought was funny and it was really offensive. I'm not a fan of his, but to be fair, he made some points and it's not like he was like, my son is perfectly healthy and has nothing wrong with him. He was like, my son suffers from something and explained it in great detail and what he thinks it is. And was like, I just have never gotten a diagnosis from a doctor that calls it cere cerebral palsy. Now, Megan's answer to that, as you guys probably well know, which we'll listen to her in a minute, is that he never goes to doctor's appointments, so he wouldn't know. Okay? So let me play you some tea about Andy Cohen. It's getting How worse, by the way. People are going to jail. <laughs> Jesus. Not, not the first person, but uh, yeah. So how did that affect your relationship? Um, it really didn't. It, it didn't affect our relationship. I didn't watch the shows. Um, I was friends with Andy Cohen. Um, it was funny. It was right before we did it. I uh, went to a little party for his parents here in St. Louis, and his mom and dad said, oh, my God, don't do it. Like, as a joke, <laughs> and they were laughing, and I still see them all the time. I like, can't believe you did that. Can't believe you did that. Kind of, like, giving me trouble. Um, but, uh, no, it didn't really affect our relationship other than the fact that um, as it progressed, I could just see the thirst for fame change. And, you know, I was like, I was done working. I had done, you know. I'd done everything I could possibly do. I was retired, basically. I was barely doing any kind of TV or anything in St. Louis. Um, we were going back and forth. We didn't even really, we didn't even live in Orange County. We lived in St. Louis. And um, so we would fly out. She would stay for whatever, how long the show would go. And then she'd fly back. And it was kind of like the reality, non-reality kind of situation. <laughs> but uh, I could just see the edge and the, 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 you know, what you would see, like, if you got a young kid as a quarterback and all of a sudden he was like, Oh, look at me. I'm a quarterback. Look, Hey, everyone, I need free dinners. And I need, and that kind of just that little twist changed. And I was like watching it going, wait, uh, you need champagne at every dinner now. What, what just happened? Like, where, where did, where did you go? And so I could see that starting to really turn into now what we see today, which is a complete and ridiculous thirst for trying to be famous. Okay, so I think I figured out why Megan King is into these relationships and makes them so public and everything. And it's not what Jim Edmonds thinks. I think it's that she has a podcast called Intimate Knowledge, which is about sex and relationships. And it's called Shh, It's a Show About Sex. And in it, the description, it says the Intimate Knowledge podcast returns with Megan King she had her share of bad dates and even a couple of bad marriages, but it, it, if at first you don't succeed, try again. Each week we're going to be talking sex life and maybe even talking a little trash. If you want, you can live vicariously through Megan and all her ups and unfortunate downs. So she has to go public with this stuff because this is what drives people to our podcast, okay? This is totally obvious. Megan King needs to make money. She can't find a guy to save her. That's for sure. Not at this point in time. And when he, and when she does, he's going to end up a content on her podcast. So th this is the conundrum, but now you understand the constant desire to put her relationships in the press that Jim Edmonds says she's thirsty and all this stuff, but it's actually related to creating content on her show. I see it all clearly now. Let me play you something she said about Jim Edmonds interview. I just played you my nose job that I got and I was really nervous to post about it. And I, I send this message across living authentically all the time. And I really struggled with how do I live authentically when I 
got a boob job and a nose job and like I like filler and Botox Depression. and all of that. So <laughs> I was struggling with that. But then, you know, my ex-husband and his wife, new wife, they came out with with a 59 minute bash me session. And I listened to it and it inspired me. It inspired me because I thought to myself, you know what? Who are who is anyone to tell me who they think I should be, who they think I am, any inconsistencies that they may find in the actions that I take? Fuck them and fuck anyone else who wants to judge so publicly, so elaborately. And so that was what my message was. You know what? This- huh? What? Okay. What the hell just happened? That made so little sense, what she just said. You're a public figure, darling. You know, you're a public figure and you keep making yourself public constantly in any way possible. So people are going to judge you and that's their right. That's what public figures are all about, sister. Anyway, she went on and on about how they bashed her and she felt like, you know, she's had to process this and she's traumatized by Jim Edmonds. None of that I, I doubt or question. Uh, this was her response to what he said. So disappointed. I, I heard a lot of hip- hypocrisies and there's just, there's just a few things that I really want to set straight. So the first thing is that Jim said that Hart doesn't have cerebral palsy. Jim and I split up. When Hart was, when Hart and Hayes were 18 months old, we split up in October 2019. Since we split up, Jim has not attended one elective specialty doctor's appointment. And when I say that, I mean like neurologist, pediatric ophthalmologist, audiologist. He's never gone to one IEP meeting. None of that. Maybe, maybe he's gone to an appointment if a kid had an ear infection or something and he had a squeeze in an appointment or like drop him off at at, uh, therapy or something like that, you know, during his days. But he has never, outside of his time, come to any elective specialty doctor's appointment with Hart. So therefore, when Hart was diagnosed with cerebral palsy in October 2020, Jim wasn't there. Never asked to see Hart's medical records. He has access to them. He has access to the CP diagnosis. It's been given to all his schools, all his teachers. That's the reason he has an IEP, which he's never been to any of his IEP meetings either. And that's all documented. And I have them printed out in Hart's file sitting right next to me. This is the receipts, people. I come bearing receipts. Don't forget, Jim Edmonds, that you are fucking with the wrong ex-wife. This ex-wife, me, Megan King, found out that that somebody doesn't have cancer on national television because we checked the fucking receipts. Heart has cerebral palsy, Jim. I mean, what kind of father doesn't know that? I'm finding this very cringe because this is her son's private stuff. And all she had to say was... He didn't need to go. He hasn't gone to any appointments. Now that I know that he's saying he doesn't know, I'm going to make sure that my attorney sends the papers to him right away so we don't have this misunderstanding again. But this response comes off a little unhinged and very insensitive to her child someday, just saying. Anyway, she goes on to talk about how Jim Edmonds sent dick pictures or something and stuff about that and that that was one of the reasons he stopped going to all the doctor appointments about the children. And I went and looked it up and um, it says, this was the gossip at the time, Megan Edmonds not leaving cheating husband despite, despite Jim sending masturbation video and dick pics to his mistress while she was giving birth. But why wouldn't you leave? I don't get it. I'm so confused. So then Megan points out that Courtney with a K O'Connor um, has images of her doing naked pictures, uh, like soft porn naked pictures on the internet. And indeed, there is a Courtney O'Connor with a K that looks a lot like Jim Edmonds' uh, wife that is her doing nudie pictures. I'm just saying, <laughs> this is just insane. Well, as we say, there are two sides to every story and this one is no exception. Megan does say she has mental health issues. Listen. Film model, whatever. You Like, I literally saw a Playboy video with you. I watched it for research for the show to make sure that it existed. These are truths. Why didn't you guys mention that on the podcast that you did? Also, 
mental health, Courtney. Courtney, Courtney suggests that I might, might be struggling with my mental health. I have struggled with my, with my mental health in the past. I've had um, clinical depression. I've treated it. I've had anxiety. I've treated it. Probably have PTSD from being married to Jim that I've treated through lots of talk therapy, meditation, and I'm doing great right now. Thanks for your concern. But Courtney, if you're so concerned about my mental health, why would you allow me to have the kids all the time? Doesn't that seem a little scary? And what- After listening to her podcast, I'm really struggling to imagine her with Cuffy Owen. <laughs> I mean, those two really belong together. They're both nightmares. I actually am not a fan of either of them at the end of this video. That's where I ended up. <laughs> So I also wanted to do a quick touch base on Gretchen Rossi. She is going to be on Ultimate Girls Trip Season 4, which will be out a long time from now. Um, but anyway, she's, you know, there's a lot of recycled cast members in this particular um, season. They'll probably have some sort of theme that makes that make sense, right? Um, but Gretchen uh, is back on TV. Let me tell you a little bit about what she's been up to. Oh, it's Ex-Wives Club. That's the theme. Come on. Couldn't do better than that. <laughs> so Jeez. Gretchen is still with Slade. Isn't that amazing? Still with Slade. They never got married, but they stayed together. She was supposed to marry him back on the show like a million years ago, but uh, I guess they never pulled the trigger. So she's just with him. Their daughter is so cute. Her name is Skylar Gray. She's one, and that is Slade's child with Gretchen. I actually met Gretchen at this Christmas party. She was so sweet. Nothing like you get the feeling of on the show, uh, which was strange. She's like in real life, really, really nice, like overly nice. So it was kind of a surprise. Oh my God, is she wearing the same dress in the Christmas picture from this year as she did at Kyle's Christmas party like 10 years ago or 11 years ago? Wow, she really likes that dress. Um, I have a few dresses like that, you know, that just, you, they're home runs. So you wear them and wear them and wear them and don't care. I, I mean, I wish I could wear a new dress every day, but not in the cards for me ever, by the way. I've actually reworn recently a bunch of dresses I wore in the tabloids like years ago. I was like, get those out of the box, break them out for the <laughs> Nightline, <laughs> break them out for the Hulu specials. Lord knows I don't wanna be the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> you know, if you don't have a lot of money, that's what you gotta do. I don't know, maybe Gretchen needs to do it too. I don't know what her financial situation is. All right, Con let's continue. So Joe De La Rosa, who was on the season one of Real Housewives of Orange County, was Slade's wife. And then that's how this all went down. That's how Gretchen met Slade. So his ex-wife was Joe De La Rosa. Now Joe De La Rosa was on Real Housewives of Orange County season one and two. And then she exited the show. Gretchen came on the show of Real Housewives of Orange County season four. By the way, Joe De La Rosa said she'd love to come back to OC, so maybe they'll bring her back with Gretchen later on in a future season. Who knows? Joe said that time heals all, but it really sucked having to see Slade with Gretchen on TV, you know, year after year, and it was not easy for her, but she's forgiven them now, the move on anyway. It hurts, I guess. Anyway, they officially hooked up in season five, Gretchen and Slade, and he had also dated another Real Housewives of Orange County girl. This is Lori. She dated Slade briefly after, like, Joe was on a break with Slade, and it was before Gretchen met him, and so she went out with him. She was like single and she was on the show for four seasons. So she's a, an OG, original girl, I, not gangster. <laughs> My version of OG has been married to him for 13 years. So she's really happy. And her daughter, by the way, wants to be on The Real Housewives of Orange County as a housewife. So she has grandchildren. She looks great for a grandma. Geez, I hope I look that good when I have grandchildren. <laughs> I better hurry. I guess he's her third husband, huh? She's third time's a charm, I suppose. When they married, they had nine children together. 
And I guess he's rich. He's a famous real estate developer in the Orange County. Here's what Slade's been up to, in case you're wondering. He's uh, got Grayson Entertainment, LLC. And since 2007, Grayson Entertainment has been involved in incredible and groundbreaking productions for both film and television. He's also an actor, by the way. Um, he says, our team continues the tradition with new and emerging projects for our partners at ITV, CBS, NBC, Bravo, etc. So he's really, you know, thick into the entertainment industry. And it's funny, we have a lot of people that we know in common which is wild, most of which are from my entertainment industry background when I did product placement in film and also parties and the film festivals. So I thought that was funny. <laughs> I never looked him up on LinkedIn before. Vicky has been talking to a lot of media outlets saying she makes like one or two appearances. I think probably a shout out to the three amigos, right? Shannon, Tamara and Vicky together again. Um, she said that she does not have an offer from Bravo to come back to the Real Housewives of Orange County full time or even as a friend of, although originally I heard that she was offered that and turned it down because she said, I don't, I don't want a part time thing. I want to be a full time housewife or nothing. And she got nothing. And I think the ultimatum pissed Andy off because he gets pissed very easily. Um, and so that's probably why she's not been made any offers since. Uh, Tamara, uh, of course, is coming back as a full-time housewife, and that's why Vicky made an appearance on the show to support her and probably try to get back in with production. She would love to come back. Vicky doesn't want Heather Dubrow on the show anymore. She feels like Heather doesn't fit in. That was some gossip that came out recently. Vicky's too. been dating this guy, Michael, since July. I do think they're still together. It looks like they went on a trip together recently. So I hope things are good for her with this guy because she deserves it. She will tell you that she's dated loads of narcissists. So to have one that is treating her well is nice. So I hope this is a good one. Taylor posted this and Vicky uh, reposted it, I guess, on her feed in some way or another, trying to become part of the Whoop It Up dream team to guarantee uh, her being a housewife on the upcoming season of Real Housewives of Orange County because there were some rumors that she was going to be a friend of. But I guess she's been upgraded to a housewife is what I heard. But look at this. I mean, look at her head on Vicky's shoulder. Oh, she's just so strategic. Holy moly. She's trying to get that you know, status of being close with, you know, the ultimate OG who's been on this, you know, for years and years and years. And whether you think she's an overrided housewife or not, Vicky has been, you know, instrumental in the show's branding for 14 plus years. So it's, I mean, you know, but I suppose if you want to snuggle up to someone at that table, it's going to be Vicky or Tamara from a social climber's perspective. See this girl, Jennifer Padrani on the left, she's been shooting or casting. And I did hear that the producers weren't that thrilled with any of the new people casting for season 17, which is why Taylor Armstrong got upgraded from a friend of to a housewife. And so Jennifer, I'm assuming, is going to actually come in as a friend of or maybe just a guest. Um, she was caught shooting with Emily, who is going to be a full-time housewife this season, Emily Simpson. Anyway, this Jennifer girl's been in this circuit with the Real Housewives of Orange County for a while. She knows Noella. She knows Tamara. She, I think, knows Bronwyn and Gina, Kyo. So, you know, she's in the mix. Today's YouTube video was more like a show than it was. <laughs> My little normal gossip sessions. I don't know what got into me. Sometimes this is really becomes like art for me and I go, oh, I want to share this and oh, I want to tell him that or oh, I have this idea I want to do. And so it ends up kind of long. But um, I did put, as I mentioned in the beginning, I did put time codes if you want to jump around. Um, you may want to watch it as a whole thing at some point because it will give you a different impression of what I'm getting across if you watch it as one long video versus just like one person, right, in it. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, in the description also is a link to the hoodies and the t-shirts. If you could buy one, that would be great. I have some new ones. They're really good. And the Patreon link is in there. It's $6 a month to, to like get in there and start, and it is really fun. 
It's a way of supporting the YouTube channel and getting a lot for your money.